In this week, we're going to look a little bit more closely at how layers work. I'm using this layers project you'll find in the chapter 4 folder. And if I resize the timeline, you'll see that we have a lot of layers that we're working with here. Now, in order to see what we're doing, I'm going to have to crunch this back down a little bit so we can actually uh, see our wizard here. But keep in mind that you can just use these scroll bars on the right-hand side. Or if you're using a mouse with a wheel, you can just roll the wheel while your cursor's in the uh, timeline panel here to uh, roll up and down through layers, which is a great time saver. First, let's look at stacking order. This is something that probably is very familiar to you if you use Photoshop. Basically, we have a series of layers here, and each layer is a separate entity. And layers that are stacked on top of other layers obscure the view of the layers beneath them. See, for example, this staff here. If I click this eye icon, I could take off its visibility. So we see where the staff is. Notice that the layers that make up the glow and all this magic stuff are behind the staff. But if I were to grab the staff layer and drag it down beneath the staff glow layer, you can see that now the staff is behind all of those layers. So stacking order really is key to getting the results you want. I'm actually going to drag this back on top of the lens flare layer. Now I don't want to drag this on top of the staff hand top layer because that would cover up the hand. In order to make it look like he's actually holding the staff, it needs to be below staff hand top. Now there are a lot of layers to play with here. You might try experimenting on your own time with this pattern layer or with the gradient layer and trying to uh, restack those. Changing the stacking order of layers is almost like changing the order of a story. By moving things around a little bit, you can come up with a completely different result. Be aware also that not only can you click this eye icon on the far left hand side to turn off the visibility of layers temporarily, and you can click it back to get the visibility back. But a lot of things here in this timeline panel, you could just click and drag down to remove the visibility of multiple items at once. Actually, we got the staff glow in that one too. So let me click and drag back down to restore the visibility. Another thing you'll run into when dealing with layers are these functions of the timeline panel. This is a little bit more advanced, but just be aware that this is here. There's this little column that we're looking at here called the switches column. It's not really a separate panel, it's just an area in the timeline panel. There's also another column that you'll see called modes, and you can get there by clicking the toggle switches and modes button. So there's what modes look like, and there's what switches look like. So if I'm ever working and I say, yeah, click this normal drop down and select darken or blah, 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 whatever, just know that if you're seeing this, then click toggle switches and modes to get back here. If you want to see both at the same time, you can right click this top bar here and go to columns and select the name of the column you'd like to see. Right now we're looking at modes, but if I click switches, we could see both switches and modes, in which case you would not have the toggle button because you're seeing both at the same time. If there's a certain column you want to get rid of, you can right click on it and select hide this, and it goes away. Next, we're going to look at a few ways to manage multiple layers. As you can imagine, there's a lot going on here. It can be a headache working like this. So uh, next, again, we're going to look at how to handle all that stuff in an organized fashion.